welcome back to another episode of Cook with Sunny. So today we're making my not so secret burger sauce. Not so secret because I'm about to blast it out onto the internet. So why is it that people love burgers so much? And part of the reason is the acidic element you're getting from your sauce. And not just from the sauce, from maybe the pickles. The tomatoes have a little bit of an acidic element and whatever other kind of pickles you may be putting on your burger. So that's part of the reason why people love burgers so much is that you have all the fat, right? The meat, the cheese, sauteed onions, maybe there's butter in a brioche bun. And then you have these layers of like the tomato, which is acidic. You have the aioli or the mayonnaise, which is acidic. You may be using pickles probably, which is acidic. So every bite that you take is balanced between that fat and acid. And whether you're a home cook or you're a young professional chef, when you make anything, and I mean basically anything, you need to be keeping fat and acid in your mind at all times. Squeezing lime into avocado to make a guacamole is fat and acid. Mixing olive oil and vinegar to make a vinaigrette is fat and acid. Using wine in a butter sauce is fat and acid. Squeezing lemon on roasted vegetables is fat and acid. Dipping french fries in ketchup, the french fries have been cooked in a bunch of oil, right? AKA fat, covered in salt, dipped in ketchup, which has a really acidic element to it, that's fat and acid. So, you know, all your favorite foods are following this kind of paradigm. So again, whether you're a home cook or a professional chef, fat and acid is what you must always keep in mind. So another thing to note is our burger sauce has some really bold flavors, and that's because if you think about it, you're putting a little bit of mayonnaise on the top and bottom of your bun, but you have all that meat and all that fat I'm thinking of. So we want a really strong and acidic and bold sauce to stand up to all that meat. So we're going to be building a garlic mayonnaise in this food processor. We're going to make it a little bit too thick on purpose and then thin it out with the rest of the ingredients to make the perfect consistency for a burger. The first thing we're going to do is to brunoise some shallots, slice in half. So we're going to try to go as thin as possible with this. Slicing first lengthways, then we're going to do two slices this way, one at the bottom, one at the top, that fans it all out, and then start slicing very thin this way. So when I'm slicing a shallot or an onion, I'm using my, my ring finger and my thumb to hold these sides in and then I'm guiding with either my middle finger or my index finger. If you want a little insight on some knife skills, it seems to work well. Next step, we're just going to get some of our dill pickles onto a paper towel. What we're trying to do is begin to remove the moisture from these pickles. And now, as we did with the shallot, we're gonna slice these thin lengthways. Turn to the side. And make these into a small dice, just like the shallots. Move your shallots and pickles to the center of the board. So what we're gonna do now is just to run our knife through it, just to get it a little bit finer. The smell of this is already making me want a burger. When you're chopping things that are fine like this, here's what I find that really helps. Just take your knife and just, what you're trying to do is compress this matter down, and this is gonna make your knife run through it easier as it's condensed now. I can feel and I can hear how that's working, right? 
Now I'm just adding a little bit of kosher salt to this. This is gonna help to draw out the moisture. Give it a little mix. And so what we're gonna do now is put that into a strainer over a bowl. And we're gonna let that drain while we start to build our burger sauce. One egg going in, whole egg, quarter eggshell of water. It's just gonna help to lighten this up. Lid on, blend. So what we're trying to do here, I think you can see that this mayonnaise is already whitening. We're incorporating some air first just into those eggs and then we'll start adding our oil. Next step, we're just gonna smash up some garlic cloves. Remove the peels, just slice through this. It can be pretty coarse. And put that straight into a little mortar and pestle. Some chili flake going in. A little pinch of salt going in. Remember, salt helps draw moisture from virtually anything. So once you understand that, you can use it to aid in this sort of process. It's gonna help to accelerate our grinding. So we're just gonna start smashing this first a little bit. Oops, spilled a little. Now this doesn't need to be completely smashed up because it's going into our aioli, but I wanted to start the process here. Okay, I'm happy with that. Gonna add that to our eggs and our water. Top on and continue to blend. So that's been blending another minute. We're gonna turn that off and continue to the next step, which is to strip some time. Now, if you've never done this, it's very easy. You just wanna hold, you wanna hold it from the top and just put your finger on and pull down and you'll just strip it all off clean. And so we just want the leaves here. Now we'll go ahead and add this strip time into the RoboCoop with the rest of our ingredients. Time going in. So now we're gonna start adding our avocado oil. I'm just using that because that's a neutral oil and it's, I like it for the health reasons, but you could use any neutral oil you have and that would work. Salt going in. So now as you can see, I've made this way too thick on purpose because the other ingredients are gonna thin it out. And also as it sits in the fridge, it's gonna get thicker as it sets. So you wanna do that. Make sure that it's too thick. So the first step in thinning this out a little bit is to add the vinegar. We haven't added any kind of acid yet. So we're putting it in now to just thin it out a little bit. So I've got a pan going of just low heat here, low to medium heat. And I'm just gonna add a few tablespoons of tomato paste. And so what we're doing here, when you get tomato paste out of the can, it tends to have this sort of acidic tinge that isn't so nice. So by cooking it, we're gonna just cook it in a dry pan here for about five, 10 minutes. We're gonna remove that tinge and just get a better depth of flavor from these tomatoes. This is the difference between amateur and pro, so I really wouldn't skip this step. So you just wanna mix this along the way. Flattening it out a little can help too. Some Expand that surface area. That's been cooking for about seven minutes. We're gonna remove this and put it on a little plate to cool in the fridge. Plate that up. And just spread it out a little bit so it'll cool down quickly. You know, I'm just gonna go ahead and stick this in the freezer. So back to our burger sauce. I'm adding now some prepared horseradish. You could also use fresh. I'm adding some whole grain, gray poupon. I'm adding just like a tablespoon of ketchup because hey, this is burger sauce and it's gotta be there. And I'm just adding a dash of Lee and Perrins. I call it that because it's a whole lot easier than a Worcestershire or sour sauce. I'm just gonna grind some pepper in here as well. 
and our tomato paste that is now cooled down. This is also going to help to thicken the sauce a little bit and just add some amazing flavor and body. Put it back on. Now we'll watch the color go red. And so that's almost complete. As you can see, it's looking awesome. All we gotta do now is add our pickles and our shallots. So these have been draining for half an hour and we have that little bit of liquid down there. That's an important step to get that out. Otherwise our sauce could be too thin. So we're gonna add our burger sauce into a bowl. Whatever kind of mixing bowl you have. Make sure you use your spatula skills to get that all out. Adding in our shallots and our pickles. And just work that in. Oh my God, this smells so good. Obviously guys, I mean, this is for a burger as I designed it, but obviously if you wanted to put this on a Reuben or any other kind of, use it as a dip, whatever, this is gonna be good on everything. And you can see it, look at that. That's the perfect texture, right? That's why we wanted to make that mayonnaise too thick on purpose so that when we add this, now it's just right. I mean, that is just golden. Okay, so let me give this a try and tell you what's going on. I got my little tasting spoon here. It's gonna be really hard to flip. So just bear with me. Got it? Second try. Second try, no cuts. Let's give it a taste. Mmm. Mmm. Even smelling it made me want a burger. Tasting it, I'm craving a burger. There's a little bit of heat from that chili, a ton of body from the tomato paste. I would not skip the tomato paste. The thyme is beautiful in there, the shallots, the pickles. It's a little bit spicy from the horseradish. It's just got those strong, bold flavors that a burger is just crying out for. I always encourage people to make this their own. I don't know, add some parsley, try it with capers, use fresh horseradish, try lemon instead of vinegar. Make it yours. Make it tailored to something that you love. If you are interested in how I make a complete cheeseburger featuring this sauce, I just made a video recently. I'm gonna put a card here to my right at the end of this video. Click that if you wanna see this stuff in action. So that is it for today, my friend. If you enjoyed the content, please leave me a like and don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time.